Now we have to look at some, so what are the types of information we can get from mass spectroscopy? Well, one of the most useful pieces is we can get the molecular weight. We can get the molecular weight of the compound because the molecular weight is just given by the m over z ratio for the parent ion. If you just look at the m over z ratio for the parent ion, remember that since the charge is one, this horizontal axis really just tells us the mass. So one of the most useful pieces of information that we get very simply is this simply tells us the molecular weight of the original parent ion. Now we can start looking at some complications. One complication is isotopes. The most common isotope of carbon is carbon-12. Most carbons are carbon-12s. However, there's a small amount of carbons that are carbon-13s. Looks like you might already have encountered this. That's right. 1.1% of all carbons are carbon-13s. Roughly speaking, the amount of carbon-13 is 1.1% of the amount of carbon-12. Remember that isotopes have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. All carbons have six protons, but it looks like carbon-12 has six neutrons and carbon-13 has seven neutrons. Well, where would be the molecular where would the molecular peak be for the normal methane here? Well, the normal molecular peak here would be at 16, right? At 16. However, we know that a small percentage of the methane will have carbon 13. And what would be the horizontal point for that? What's going to be the horizontal coordinate for methane with carbon-13? Um, now, that question actually has nothing to do with the 1.1. All we want to know is how much does this weigh. We don't want to know how much it is. Remember, the horizontal axis just tells you the weight. Just 17. Just 17. That'll be at the 17 point. Of course, carbon-12 has a weight of 12, and carbon-13 has a weight of 13. So if you have carbon-12, you have a weight of 16 overall, 12 from the carbon and 4 from the hydrogens. And methane with carbon-13 would have a weight of 17. Now, what's going to be the relative abundance of these? Well, that's what you were thinking about. This peak over here is going to be 1.1% as tall as this peak. This peak will be 1.1% as tall as this peak. What would be some symbols for this? Well, remember the symbol we usually use for the molecular peak is M plus dot to show that it's the molecular cation. And the common symbol for this is M plus one because it's got a weight of one more. Oftentimes people don't bother putting in the plus and the dot anymore, but I guess you could. But the key thing is they call this M plus one to show that it's got a weight that's one more than the cation over here. So that's our M plus one peak. Anyway, this would be 1.1% the height of this one over here. Now. What should be the horizontal coordinate for the molecular peak for ethane? 30. Yeah. So this would be 12 plus 12 plus 6, which would be 30. Now, what about if we have a carbon 13? Well, how many, what percent carbon-13 isotopes are we going to have here for the M plus 1? Well, first of all, what would be the weight of the M plus 1 ion here? Now, the M plus 1 would only have one carbon-13. For example, it could look like this. So then its mass would be 31. 
it's important. And so, what percent? What percent of the particles? What percent of the what percent of the fragments will look like this? One point one percent. However, it's also possible that the second carbon could be the carbon thirteen. One point one percent of the time that will happen. So what's the total percent of the time that either of these will be carbon-13? 2.2%. So now, this height is going to be 2.2% of the parent ion. If you only have one carbon, then your height, uh, then the m plus 1 peak is 1.1% of the parent. But if you have two carbons, you have twice as much chance to have a carbon-13. With twice as much chance to have a carbon-13, the total amount of carbon-13 molecules with carbon-13 would be 2.2%. Why don't we worry about what would happen if both of these were carbon-13? Well, we don't need to worry about what happens when they're both carbon-13 because that's so rare that it's not going to pick up. The only way that they could both be 13 is if you have, so only 1.1% of the time is the first one carbon-13, and only 1.1% of those times would the second one also be carbon-13. That's almost never going to happen. So we only need to worry about having a single carbon-13. We don't need to worry about it, what would happen if there's more than one carbon-13. That'll be too rare to be picked up by the detector probably anyway. Here's propane. So let's calculate what the horizontal coordinate is for the molecular for the molecular ion for propane. What would be our horizontal coordinate for the parent? 12 times 3 is 36. Plus 8. Yeah, 44. Now, how high is the m plus 1 peak going to be compared to the parent? 3.3. 3. 3. That's right. Because now there's three ways you could have a carbon-13. 1.1% of the time, the left-hand carbon will be a carbon-13. 1.1% of the time, the middle carbon will be a carbon-13. And 1.1% of the time, the right-hand carbon will be a carbon-13. That gives us 3.3% chance total of having a carbon-13. Again, we don't need to worry about having more than one carbon-13. That's so rare that that would hardly ever happen. We only need to worry about the chance of getting one carbon-13. The chance that a single carbon is a carbon-13 is 1.1%. So the chance that any of three carbons would be a carbon-13 is 3 times 1.1. Or suppose you have n carbons. The chance that any of n carbons would be a carbon-13 is n times 1.1. Now then, remember that this doesn't have to be the base peak, so this height might not be 100%. This height over here might be, say, 43%. Well, then how can we figure out what this height is? Yeah. It's not going to be 3.3. It's going to be 3.3% of 43%. To use calculators in the test? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's how you would do this. Remember that your calculator doesn't know about percents. It only knows about decimals. So you'd first have to translate these percentages into decimals by moving the decimal point two places to the left. 43% is really 0.43. And 3.3% is not 0.33, it's 0 0.033. We have to be careful with this one. And then on your calculator would give you an answer of 0 0.01419. But what would that be as a percentage? So you're going to have to do a couple of decimal to percent conversions to do this type of problem. First of all, you have to take the percents and make them into decimals so your calculator knows how to work with them. And then you have to take the answer that your calculator gives you and translate it back into a percent, because that's the way that these vertical heights are reported as percents. So if the parent ion is not the base peak, then it's not going to have a height of 100%. And then this height is going to be um, not necessarily 3.3%, it'll be 3.3% of whatever this height is over here. Good?
let's say that the m plus 1 peak is 5.5% of the parent height. What information does that give us about the molecule? There's five carbons. That there's five carbons. That's right. Remember that all of this spectroscopy and spectrometry is just to give you clues about the structure. So now we can see how this carbon-13 idea gives us a clue about the structure and allows us to figure out how many carbons there are. The fact that there's this carbon-13 in known abundance allows us to figure out how many carbons there are by comparing the height of the m plus 1 peak and the height of the molecular peak. So this we would know has five carbons. Good.